Councillor Jakutis? Present. Mary Joyner? Present. John Holliday? Yes, present. George Harvey? Present. Richard Smith? Here. Betty Gonzalez? Here. Joan Noble? Here. Arthur Akers? <coughs> um, Jacqueline Fitzgerald? And Pam Edwards? Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, glad to be back after our summer break. Everyone enjoy their summer? Sure. Yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. All right. Let's go. Let me put the glasses on so I can see. All right. So uh, first thing on the agenda is update from our new director, Megan. Welcome, Megan. Thank We're glad you. you're here, and we we'll hope you're settling in. I am. Um, the city is um, very welcoming, and I appreciate that. And the seniors are wonderful. So I am fortunate to start a new role with a very strong, supportive staff. However, there's not enough of them. So with that being said, my first observation since starting the Senior Center on July, July 3rd is that there's not enough staff that currently the staffing does not meet the operational needs of the center. That has to do with our need for a full-time kitchen coordinator and for additional staff on the floor to participate and support activities for our seniors. So that is something that I'm going to be working with the administration um, very um, diligently on is to increase our staff and to figure out where we can um, try to reallocate funds to make that work. My second observation since coming here is that this building needs to be rekeyed, just as all Lynn Public Schools are rekeyed. So we have doors that only City Hall or someone else has keys to. And that is a significant safety issue. I do not want any senior behind a door that I cannot unlock. So that is paramount. Safety is always first with me, so I will always lead with those concerns. Um, and on those same lines, um, because of the number of staff that is in the building and when we have special activities, the, the amount of seniors that come in significantly increase. Generally, we run about 60, 60 65 seniors a day. When we have an event, such as a Labor Day party or the 4th of July, we're running like 100, 120. That presents a significant safety issue. There are not two safe means of egress if the, if the center room is too full. So what I am doing now is limiting the amount of people that can come into the center when we have special events. Um, and that limiting is going to be based upon the previous architectural designs that were made for the center that were here when I got here that showed the capacity for our large dining room area. That capacity is based upon the way that the seats, the tables and the chairs are set up. So if we had rectangular chair, rectangular tables, excuse me, we could accommodate more people. However, we have many round tables. If anyone goes into our room, there, it's a mod podge. It's some old tables, round, elongated tables. That is not conducive to wheelchair movement. That is not conducive to serving food, having people line up and go out. And it's not conducive to an emergency situation where you need people to be able to be seated so you can do an evacuation. So I will be addressing those issues. And we will be having fire drills here and emergency evacuations here. Practice runs. We have to be able to get in and out of this center safely and effectively for all of our seniors. Megan, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. When you say there aren't enough egresses, you, got, you cannot open certain doors for people from the city can. So the door down the end where that last round table mm -hmm. is, can you open that or no? The last, no, the, 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 com the computer, the exercise room, no. No, yeah, not, no, that no, no, no. not that one. Not that one. In the dining room. Still in the dining room, like where the um, serving tray is. The, oh, the, yes. Yeah, 
We get over that. You can okay. open that, but yeah. you cannot access the other doors. Yeah, there's a couple of doors that we cannot access at all. So if somebody, if seniors are in that room and there was an emergency, they cannot get out those doors. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's why I want this building completely rekeyed. And this was something that had been discussed under the previous administration with Chris, and it wasn't anything that was brought to my attention until they, the city was going to use the building on August 27th because there was a flood in some other part of the city. They were going to use it for emergency shelter. And that's when I became aware that I could not unlock every door in the building, on this floor of the building. And that's a safety issue. I could have a senior behind a locked door if I can't get to them. So, significant safety issue. Um, and in terms of the... the Sorry, Mary, you had a question? I had a question. So, going back to the doors, so I, know, I haven't been here in a while, but in the past, that door, the handicap buttons aren't working. Are they working now? No, they are not. Yeah, that's All right, kind of I will add that to my list. Thank you. So, those are the things that I need to do <coughs> moving forward to continue to keep everyone safe in our building. Um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Well, regarding the 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 king, the, the property. Yes. Uh, the building code. What did you see on ground as far as the building code for the building? That is a very interesting question. I called the city. I called a couple of different places to try to find out the number, the safety number. How many people can safely be in this building? Yes. No one could give me that number. So then I deferred to the architectural designs. And in terms of the areas of egress, there is the front door here. Well, there is an emergency exit right outside of my door here, right? Mm -hmm. And then there is the main door when you come in that opens. And then there are doors further down. But the concern is that when we have so many people in the dining room area, you can't get through. Um, I think that you were here, Pam, for Labor Day. We, we could not walk in the building. Like, it was just too full. And that morning, we had a significant medical emergency. Okay. My follow-up question is, we are, we are approaching very festive moments now. Yes. What is the time frame to get this resolved? I am not sure, but I think that we'll be working very closely with the city to take care of that. I would hope within, at least to be able to come back within the next month and give you a date. But that is really a significant priority. Well, that's to be a high priority. High priority. Yeah, yeah. that's All to right. be a high priority. Because mm -hmm. it's unacceptable. Megan, yes. my concern now, listening to you, because tomorrow we're scheduled to have a friends meeting. Mm -hmm. The room that you're putting us in, is there a key <coughs> to that door? Yes. Okay, not thank lock. you. I will double check that, I'm pretty oh. sure, but I will double check that before I have it. Okay, in. because the problem is, room. you know, you could say, well, leave the door open, but when there's other activities going on, how can you have a meeting? You know, effectively, you can't, and that room is a lot smaller than uh, where, where we, if we were able to meet here, which we can't because of prior commitments. All right, I will double check that, yes. I want to know, I want to know about, because before in Glace, we have like a once a month or every three months, then we have a testing alarm and the people go out to take, to know how long they take the people elderly to in case they emerge to go out. Here, we don't have anything of those yet. Exactly, and that is my point, Betty, <laughs> that that's what we have to do. But, we have to have but, those drills. But that door that you said is broken, one day that we have activity was open. Mm -hmm. So I think if they try the, the we can do a the test for from now to find out how long they take the elderly to go out, we, they can the door can open from just only to practice. All right, so the door you're talking about is in the dining room where we eat. And when I got here there was a big sign that said the door was broken. Yeah. So I didn't even know that door could open till last week, honestly, no, because there was a sign that said it was broken. What's open in the one day the barbecue, somebody opened and anything happened. Mm -hmm. 
So that, that is on the high list of priorities to figure out exactly what keys are open that we can have open to find out the timeline for getting the building rekeyed and to start the, um, the safety evacuation along with the fire department. Like we, I want a professional agency to guide us in this. Right, so there's the preparedness that the fire department does, there's their public safety. We will be working with them to, to deal with this issue and we will be working with ISD to secure the door and in terms of is that, is that door something that we should or should not be using? I think you need to have access to all doors. Oh yes, no I'm talking about the, the door that Betty's talking about, the one that had been in the, great, in the dining room that says it's broken. I think that's the same one that you mentioned a moment ago, that, yeah, it's the door in the room behind the table where June and them usually sit. Is that the one you're yeah. speaking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. door right there. There is a sign on it. There is a sign. Open. Yes. But it, it should, I agree, so I think that should be available at yeah, any time. The doors right. need there to there be should there. be no reason any door should be broken. Right. You want to know too about the activity? Yes. I don't know why this room about the board director here are Tanya, <coughs> Michelle, Mabel, and you. They have um, the activity, they don't, be, they don't have coordination for because sometimes they have three or four at the same time. Mm. Like uh, Un Michelle okay. has okay. a okay. Un moment to wait. We have to, are we done with the safety discussion? And activities is next mm -hmm. on the agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Megan, uh, yeah, I, begin I, with uh, talking about the safety and then we're going to do activities. I, I still oh, have one, one, okay. No, you're right. It's okay. just that, yeah, yeah. I still had a question yes. from the first issues that you just spoke about. I'm sorry. You said I'm sorry. that. You, you, you said that um, you're going to limit the number of folks coming on on activity. Yes. How are you planning on doing that? We're going in the newsletter that's coming out um, October 1st. It's going to let everybody know that they need to call and all activities, special events need to be pre-ticketed, like the prom was here. Yeah. So you call ahead and put your name on the list and we know you're coming. I don't want a situation where we have 100 people, we don't have enough food for the people. Um, so we want, we want to limit that for that. And until I get an official number from the fire department, yeah. um, I'm going to go with the numbers the number that have been there. And John may have new numbers since he has another design for us today, but we will right. see. Right. Um, and uh, me, just another question. Um, even when our best <coughs> efforts, when we pre-ticket, there are people that show up at the door. Yes, How are we going to kindly handle those that you know appear the day of um, who may just want food you know that that is a very very good question um, I think that it's just a a caring conversation to say that this this is our protocol and we need to serve the people who are here now and if there is any more then we can give it to you but the people who were able to Follow the protocol because we're trying. I'm trying to give at least a full two week notice. Like there's going to be a big event coming up, and I don't want to go into the activities yet. That a lot of people are going to come, and I want people to come and enjoy the space. But I want it to be safe and comfortable so that we can move around in the building as well. Megan, yeah, do you great. think maybe? And I get where you're coming from. You have to know because you're not going to have enough food or supplies for activities. Or staff. <laughs> or staff. Is there mm -hmm. any way? Let's say, for instance, you're planning on 60 people to come. Do you think you could do food for 75, maybe up it just a little, just to have that, if something were to happen, you have that little extra food in the background that, okay, I can accommodate 10 more people if they show up. I know different events, that's what people mm -hmm. do. They'll have a little... Um, okay little stash in the back just for the ones that have not signed up and showed. Mm -hmm. All right. That's I, just something to think about. I, I appreciate that thought and I will consider that because just I hadn't really about. thought about that next step beyond. Yeah. Go ahead. So that, no, I think that, that was what, uh, one of my questions was going to be, but as well as I understand the uh, position where you don't want to overcrowd the, the event. Because I've been at a few events and it's, it's, for me, it's miserable. Yes. Okay. 
because you can't get anywhere other than that one spot. And that, to me, is a, is a problem. It is. For me, anyway. And I think for other seniors that... that well, anybody who has mobility issues. Yeah. So let's, let's be fair. Right. That's yeah. it. Exactly. So, no, I, so I, 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 I appreciate you addressing that, that concern. And, you know, so hopefully somewhere along the line. And I think maybe the table construction. Yes. Will help. We're going to look at trying to purchase um, different yeah. tables, and that's going to make it more accommodating to everyone. Yeah, I think it's great. Okay. Thank you, Maggie. Sure. Miss Mary. Yes, just quickly. So in those times, when I know you said you're understaffed. Would there be an issue if a senior wanted to help that's mobile? No, I, I think that we would be accepting of support oh, okay. from seniors, yes. All right. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Then that's okay. a question. Megan, as far as that side door goes, that's always worked. That sign was put up there many moons ago when Chris was here. And the reason for that was so people wouldn't come in that door. That's why it was put up there, because a lot of people would go to that door and try to come in. That's why that was put up there. Thank you for giving me a historical context for that. Yeah, that's why it was put up there, because they didn't want people coming in that door, and they didn't want seniors letting people in that door. Okay. The staff has shared with me there's something about the door locking, but I will follow that up. Thank you very much. Why? Because you're supposed to come through the front door. Right, I will follow up that and door. And be signed in. That's a significant security thing. Okay. It was never Can't broken. Just please use another door. It would be right. an easy Can solution. <coughs> please use the right door. I just a quick question. I'm going to look on my way out, but there should be, oh, where are your permits off of the building? Yes. There should be the occupancy permit right on the wall. I have, yeah. I have looked high and low. Really? Please help me find that. And even when they do under the enforcement, they work at one of the do here. Yeah. They need a security camera too. Because security this is a, the, only the building the agency signs. <coughs> you don't know what's happened. Even inside the, the they hear too many things happen that nobody oh, knows because they have it would help they the liability have the as well. Yeah. And they be around if they were seen to. Megan, this so, building was occupied before. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't the fire department in the city of Wynn know that the occupancy? I would think they would, Joan. And I called Pace and I asked them, and they said the city owns the building, ask them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know why I they call, do I this. called oh. ISD. And it's email called them. passing the buck. But right. Somebody has to know. Right. So Especially now, we're going to the find building out. is we'll being occupied by 70% of the people that are here either have a cane, they're not really, um, when the fire department comes with a drill, who is supposed to go out first? Well, that's and where are the wheelchairs and the canes? Because if they're allowed to just go at random, mm. you've got an absolute disaster on your hands. And that's why she's going to do this with the fire department and plan a Those training things are very important. I think I love it. Sounds great. Right on the ball. You know, she needs that. It's a great thing. Yeah. But I'm going to get the office occupancy permit for you. I know in certain buildings, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, it, go by, it also goes by the number of restrooms you have and the square footage. So I know that has a lot to do with the occupancy, too. But we will get that number for you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, I think I'm ready to go on to activities unless there are any other questions. Activities. I am super excited about the activities. The activities and the services and programming is, um, is enhanced and more creative and more engaging. So this is a senior-led activity. Um, they're, they're doing amazing things. On, we are going to Topsfield Fair we, um, early this month. I don't have a date yet because we're trying to secure a, uh, a bus, but we are going to Topsfield Fair. On um, the 10th, there is a supper club, which is a senior-led activity, which is very nice in the evening. Um, on the 13th of October, we will be doing Celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. 
um, on October 26th, there will be a trip to Mighty Mill. On October 31st, there will be a Halloween party. So for those events, the Halloween party and the Hispanic Heritage Party celebration, those will be events that people need to call ahead. Mm -hmm. But as Diane suggested, I will put away some extras and see if we can expand that. I really appreciate that idea. All right, so those are the activities for the month. For the services, for the monthly services, we'll continue to have the hairdresser, the nail person, um, the massage therapist, the barber. We will continue the medical screenings with the dentist on the third and the podiatrist on the fourth. Those services are really helpful. And I have to tell you, the, um, out of the first set of professional services, the massage therapist is the biggest hit. Mm -hmm. They really, really enjoy awesome. her. Um, so we're trying to get a little more time with her. Um, additional programming, we have worked with the Alzheimer's Society and they will be doing um, programming twice a week here um, for the Alzheimer's workshop. It will be Tuesday in English, Thursday in Spanish. So that's going to be a monthly series. GLIS is also going to be providing a monthly series on chronic pain and matter of balance on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On October 26th, there will be a presentation from the Disability Network in Salem. And on October 27th, there will be a presentation from the Family Resource Center and in English and in Spanish. Um, our ongoing program of Tech Goes Home, Tech Goes Home, excuse me, is continuing, and right now we are in a Spanish Tech Goes Home class. Any thoughts or questions on the activities and or services? Betty, you had a question, activities. Mm -hmm. yeah. The question is that uh, about the activity, because I ask you sometimes, mm -hmm. two or more, three times, for something, mm -hmm. and you tell me, Ask Catania. Mm -hmm. Ask Catania. Mm -hmm. And I say, I am at the ping pong table. Tanya to him, head to Tanya. So don't have coordination for the activity. And that, that's why I ask you what's happened between you, Mabel, Michelle, mm -hmm. or something, because Mabel is a um, Michelle doing some activity, but don't, the all are in the same time than the her, is her activity. Don't make the coordination, you know, for uh, the other time. Sometimes we have to cancel some because they have to go to the another one. Yeah. And I don't know what is going on here in that scene because if you don't work together. You know what it is, Betty? I think they're working together, like Megan said. We don't have enough staff. Right. And that's the issue right now. We need more staff to have these activities because if you notice at lunchtime, Megan or um, Tanya could be in doing dishes. Half the staff is here, then they'll switch off, then there could be a medical emergency. We do not have enough staff down no, here. No, but they, they seem they coordinate, they have coordination for the activity. Because yeah. I'd like to elaborate on that. Okay. Michelle is okay. trying to make too many support. Okay. So when she brings the scene here, it's like a, the group of Spanish is going to separate for this scene or this scene. Because I say, well, Michelle, why they, they don't do it something together? In, yeah. Okay. So okay. I'd like to address that better. What's going on is that we are doing multiple activities. So you could have one group in one room doing something and another group listening to a different programming in another room. So on Thursday, grandparents are in here doing a grandparent support meeting and they may be doing something different in another room. So we are going to have different opportunities going on simultaneously. And we are very, trying our very best to balance the language capacity for everyone, so that's why when I talked about the Tech Goes Home, you know, we do that in English, we do that in Spanish. When the Family Resource Center is coming to present, they're going to present and they're going to bring a translator, so that will be in English and Spanish, as well as the all-timers information. 
Those classes will be separate. So one class will be simply in English and one class will be in Spanish. But we are, we are balancing that and we are doing more than one programming at a time. So sometimes I may say defer to Tanya because she is the program manager, whereas I am the director and I am overseeing everything. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Yes, I'm not I, ignoring people. I have been a, the occupancy oh, summer. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, that's me. Um, I just wanted to say I have been approached about um, the dinner club being m member led, and um, I think maybe if we had a, had more of an explanation, the com the concern I got was that. Um, the food was put out and it was said, you know, here, serve yourself, clean up yourself, and some are not able to do that physically. So just a better understanding of that um, event and what is expected of those who attend. I believe that is a pre-ticketed event. Do, I believe the dinner club is pre-ticketed, is that correct? Um, yeah, they were doing it, and then you could buy when you came in, too. Okay. But, but um, just to help you a little bit, I have only been the one, I'm, I'm sorry, but the one that I had gone to, it wasn't kind of, it wasn't, well, at that point it wasn't like that. Tanya looked for some volunteers. Mm -hmm. I think Betty and there was a couple other ladies served the food. But we had to go up, it was kind of like a buffet style okay. kind of thing. You go up and tell them what you want and they, they serve it to you. Is that what you were saying, Pam? Because I was, I was um, like, is it become yeah. different? I was not here. I was just told no, no, yeah. that um, uh, the group that attended was told this is a senior led event. Um, well, basically, you know, serve yourself and clean up. And that the staff walked away. Um, and that day, maybe there wasn't enough volunteers from the, com you know, right. whatever. So I just wanted, you know, maybe so if we're going to do it that way, I think that it needs to, you know, be better, uh, maybe clear what expectations are if you attend. Right. So, so that, that's, that's exactly what happened when I was here. They, they said it was a senior event and uh, senior led. So... I don't know what it was in the past, so Joan's going to... Okay. I have been to the supper club in the old building, and it was a lot different. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was at... George was at the first supper club meeting. He was not there the second, which is the one that I attended. And I was there when Tanya made the announcement that this is a senior, right. it's the seniors that wanted it, and it's not going to be staffed by the center staff. However, and, and the seniors are to serve themselves. Tanya and um, Jeff did go and pick up the meal. And then the seniors are to serve themselves and do the cleanup. And I observed this because obviously you know I'm handicapped. I can't do any of this. And it's very embarrassing for me to be at a function where I can't contribute anything and have to depend on other people. What bothered me was the whole time, obviously the staff isn't going anywhere because seniors are still in the building and they, they're going to have to lock up. So while I watch the gentleman on a cane dragging the, the rubbish across the floor, um, the staff was sitting in Tanya's office. So needless to say, I will not be coming back to supper club. And I was there that second time. George was not. And that's exactly what Tanya said. This is not right. a staff-sponsored thing, right. even right. though that's exactly what she said. It's a senior thing, so you do the serve yourselves and do the cleanup. Right. May I ask what the conversation was to put this program back in place and what were the expectations of it? I believe if you go back to the minutes, George is the one that brought right it up to I, have this to start the supper club up again. Okay. But it, it, I did, and you're right. I just didn't understand the whole concept of how it was ran. 
how they run it. Well, I understand too. It's different now because my brother's table um, at the old building, they used to come and serve the food. Mm -hmm. Right. The staff, there was always somebody from staff, obviously, there to collect the money, which was turned over to my brother's table, I understand. Um, so that was different. And Tanya did say, we will pick up the food, which she did with Jeff. But once it's here, it's in the hands of the senior. I have a question to that. So the, the idea that the seniors came up with an idea to get together and have meals in a center that is run, that is managed by staff. So they are their own liberty to just be looked at and not be helped. Is that what we're talking about here? I, I'm not sure. I'm trying to decipher that myself, sir. Because that that is unacceptable. Because if they either they come up with the concept or they didn't come up with the concept. The staffs here have been paid to man to manage the seniors. Yes. So they cannot just sit idle and allow the seniors. At what age that they are going to be incapable of managing such activities all by themselves is very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. So whoever came up with that idea that oh because this is seniors' idea, so they are at their liberty, they can just do whatever, and then came up behind themselves. Mm -hmm. That language alone is very degrading. That's to me. My mom lived here. One of the things that was said is that they are not paid beyond a certain time. That is unacceptable. But, no, but no, this, no, no. If, you're if, asking what was said in yeah, the yeah, meeting it, it, to the seniors, and I'm telling you because I, I, I was there. I, I, I know. The I, problem I, is, if you are a paid staff, and you are in the building, regardless if you're paid till 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or whatever, you are responsible. To, to, you have a liability to the seniors in that building. In that building. Am I, am I not correct? Of course you are correct. Okay. You are absolutely correct. So, so whoever made that we were statement... Told, oh. I'm telling you exactly what we were told. This is not second hand. I was there. And I was the one that came to Pam because it upset me. It upset me. It, and they have a right to is not it? work beyond what they're being paid for. I don't think you should be inclined to go to go home, you should. You've given me something to explore, and I will do a deeper uh, dive into that. Please do. Okay. Okay. Can I just ask one question? Absolutely. Um, so, the senior dinner, this is after hours that they're bowling they're basically volunteering to stay later than they have to. Is that what it is? It's not during? No. Hours. So what is it? Yeah, it's like from, no, from five, like three to three, three to five. Three to five. Three to five. Oh, and the center closes at what, four? Three. Um, and we close three. at three, and then we okay. have an administrative hour from four okay. to five. Yeah. Mm. So maybe five. maybe we should consider it being on another day of the week. But again, let me do a deeper dive and do some exploration into this issue. Let's come up with a better logistics for yes. that. And once again, yes, then, I wholeheartedly say, if you're an able-bodied senior and you can get up and help, you help. Because I was here once and I helped. Mm -hmm. I cleaned the tables. I have no problem with it. It doesn't bother me, but I can hear where you're coming from. Right. Yes, we don't want anybody right. who has any kind right. of handicap to right. feel that they are not up. being respected. Right. Respected, right. exactly. Right. Right. My, and my concern was... Um, I think that I agree with Mary that this is not a daycare. Mm -hmm. This is a senior center. But we want to make sure everybody is welcome, no matter what their capacity is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, if somebody wants to help and volunteer, yes, but those that can't, yeah. we should figure it out as a community. How and I mean, our center yeah. as a community yes. of how best to help them. Yeah. Also, this goes back to the COA board. We are the COA board, and this isn't just one meeting a month. We are supposed to be here to help the senior center. Right. So if any of the COA board or your family members want to help volunteer during that one time a month, it is welcome. We have a lot of politicians that have been asking us, are, you know, can we come? Yeah. Can I have a coffee hour? Do you want to meet with us? Mm -hmm. One thing that they could do now cool. and after the election is come and help serve right. during that okay. dinner. Yeah. 
present company excluded because <laughs> counselor Jacudis is always with us I'll and always down, serve. Sarah, I'll come down. What, what, <laughs> what day is it on though? Yeah. The thing is, um, well, it's not Tuesday. Yeah, I was going to say Tuesday is difficult to have it on Tuesday if we do get those volunteers because they're in their monthly meetings. So. Right. I just want us to always not be close-minded right. of what is the possibility, and I all don't all you know we can't always point fingers. No, we are a group, we're a community, and if we want something done, let's figure out the best way to get it done. Okay. I wholeheartedly agree, and yeah, that is my agree. concept for the senior center: that this is a community, a caring community, and we need to work together collectively to support our seniors. Right. That, that's what we're here for. Period. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why you had the head on, too. <laughs> <laughs> and Joan, wholeheartedly, I do hope that you will return. Yeah. Whenever. You, you got, it takes time to get over it, I know. <laughs> but I do hope that you will Thank join, because I know it was something you enjoyed doing. When you return, I'll come and serve you myself. Okay. Right. <laughs> Look at I'm that. holding you to that. I was just going to say, hold them to that. We have that on television. Yeah. Yeah. You got his phone number, right? You know, you got his number? All right. All right. I have. Yeah. All right. What do we have up next? Um, Megan, your financial report, right? Talk to you. Don't we want John to talk for a little bit? <laughs> He'll be, yeah. We can uh, rotate. He could be next. I just. Um, well, I want to finish up and then we'll okay. the, I just want to emphasize to um, that let's work our best um, in all of our aspects to get the word out that these uh, these upcoming ticketed events, um, whether that is um, putting flyers in the building, um, and that does not again does not mean the staff has to put the flyers in the building. Anybody that lives in housing could take those flyers home with them when they leave right. here and give them to their manager. That's a very good idea. Thank you. You know. Oh, you mean flyers for the activity? Yes. Well, so yeah. people will know that it's got to be ticketed. Yeah. Right. Right. So and to give them a heads up. Yes. And I, it makes sense to do it in English and in Spanish. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Very and good idea. you know, let's work our networks that we have. Um, right. We want people to come and enjoy themselves safely. Yes. All right. Do we get a drum roll? Yeah. Here comes the financial stuff. <laughs> All right. So, and Megan, before I start typing a bunch of things, will we get a copy of that? Of what? Um, the financial that you're going to give us. You, the financials. You have it. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. I got it. I got it. So. I have to say, learning about the budget and the computer system with the city has been a little bit daunting, but um, it appears that in our budget right now, there's $108,894.80. $40,000 of that needs to be moved over to cover a salary that had been paid out of a grant. Um, we expect the new money to come in from Massachusetts Council on Aging. MCOA, um, in the amount of approximately $280,000. That should be, uh, that's approximately the drop because each, for, Pam, you know it's $14 per senior, we have the number. So that's what we anticipate moving forward with. Um, I think everyone who's involved with the Senior Center knows that we still need another vehicle. That is a significant issue. A lot of other senior centers are able to provide multiple rides for people. They take people to the grocery store, to Walmart, to the doctor. We aren't able to do that. So that is something that is a, a significant long-term goal for me to get um, another vehicle. I know we have one coming in, in the works, but we still need another vehicle beyond that. If you drive by, um, what city is that? Peabody Senior Center? They have a fleet. So like, it's in Salem. In Salem. I, I'm not sure what happened to us here, but we need to play catch up on this well, game. Just get three. Really, we, we do. Right. Um, and the thing of it is, the next van needs to be handicapped it accessible. It is. It is yeah. handicapped accessible. Yeah. 
I will find that I, I got an email. I'll have to dig it out for our next meeting and put that in. But it is a diagram for the van so that everyone can know what it, what it looks like it's coming. Do we have a date on our window of that delivery? I don't, but I can try to find out. Okay. All right. Um, on a lighter financial note, we have secured $100,000 in a tech grant. Great. 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 So I have to give credit to the previous administration which started that grant process, but it is up to Tanya and I to fulfill the obligations of the grant, to make all the recordings and the documentation, and to utilize that money. So um, we have a big plan. Um, but I'm going to stop right there because our big plan for that money has to do with the build out and moving up. So. Any questions before I pass it over to? Yes. When you met with the city regarding the budget, yes. did you tell them that you needed more staff? Is yes. that encountered in the new budget that the mayor has passed? Um, it's not, but the city is willing to work with me to see if I can reallocate and move assets around and maybe borrow and beg from public health. They, they, the city is supporting us and they know that we need more staff, Joe. Yes, we do need more staff. Um, all right, so we will, we're going to skip around a little because John is here from the mayor's office and he has the schematics to uh, for the senior center. If you want to yep. let him out yes. here, John, that way everyone can see. Cool. If I could also make a plug, so we have some Hispanic Heritage events coming up uh, at City Hall. So on the 3rd, we're going to be holding a reception in the City Hall foyer. And then in the auditorium, we're going to show um, a movie. It's called In the Time of the Butterflies. It's um, about some sisters in um, the uh, Dominican Republic who stood up to the the regime at that time so we'll have that event on October 3rd and then on at that's at 5 and October 17th we're going to do a flag parade and flag raising also at City Hall at 5 p.m. Um, we're going to start at City Hall we'll go for a walk with the flags around the common weather providing that it's nice out and then come back for a flag raising so I'll um we sent out the flyer for that but I'll make sure that you all have copies as well all right, so do you want to go to the large table? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, I'll pop over. And um, some of the questions that came up in terms of cameras, um, occupancy, and uh, and then the, the door as well, I'll let you talk to ISD. Oh, cool. But um, I, where I think, I think both the counselor and I were trying to text ISD, so hopefully we'll have, you'll be able to give some updates. Um, so right now, I'm gonna just pop this aside. Um, ISD. So we've been working with PNAP, the architects. Sorry. Um, and I'll leave these here too. But we've been working with GNAP, the architects, who I think have come in here a few different times, um, and I think have spoken to a few different people. They they put aside. Yeah. Would you like to move away, Joe? No, that's okay. I can flip it too. Yeah. If it, if that's you okay. Okay. So this is just the outline of the building. Um, and then this is, you know, obviously the parking. This is where, when the construction does start, they're expecting to lay down for staging. And then they'll be coming in this over by the kitchen right now. Um, and we'll see how this transitions. But th this is like just a very overview, a uh, general overview of how they'll start doing the construction. Um, and then I think really what, and, and I think we've discussed a little bit the funding that the city has, um, you know, obviously is finite for the project. And so what we're really prioritizing is to um, renovate the first floor. And there was conversations early on about where we would need to relocate people, but we've worked with GNAP and they don't think that's going to be necessary um, so that we don't have to worry about, A, finding another location and then transporting people to another location, which is difficult. We want to stay. Um, <coughs> as close to the downtown as we can. So we're gonna, they, they've determined how they can do it so that it, it's, there's probably gonna be some disruption, but um, everybody will still be able to stay here. 
Um, and this is the money they were going to utilize from Seth Moulton mm -hmm. and Creighton. Uh, Creighton for this. So, million, so, yeah, two point four. To purchase yeah, some building. of it was used to just acquire the space. Okay. Um, and then the federal earmark from Congressman Moulton. Moulton? Yes. We're still working with the feds, uh, HUD, to actually get that money. So just getting awarded the money is easy. <laughs> Going through the process of the paperwork to get it is a little bit. Um, more, I don't want to say difficult, but just time consuming. And, th and that's honestly, I'm sure the big question that everybody has is when is this happening? Yes. Um, I don't have a specific date because we still have to get the money together. But I've been, I spoke with um, Lara Stockfish from ISD this morning. And what we're going to do is we have the designs done. So they're preparing the documents to go out to bid. And we're also looking at lead time on certain equipment and things that we might need to procure. So if we know, I don't know, like this stairs or something, this is just the steel stairs take, you know, nine months to build. We're not going to wait until we are ready to do construction. They'll get that now. These? No, yeah, these stairs right here. So right now there's no way, as you know, there's no way apart from an elevator to get up to the second floor. Mm -hmm. So down by where the current elevator is, they're going to be putting in a stairwell that goes up to the third floor. Now, I remember back, you know, Chairman, um, if you remember, recall, is the renovation incorporated with the deck? Uh, yeah, so, um, so that, I mean, and that's really like that big thing right now. So this, okay. is, so this is the first floor, yeah. this is the second floor, this is the third floor. And, and, and like I was saying, so the, the main focus with the first phase of... Um, the I don't, rehab is going to be the first floor, yeah. and then the second floor. What you'll see is is really the stairwell is to um, connect the seniors with this space, and then what's existing up there is is what you'll see. And there's going to be some discussions about what how much money do we have. So as we start to get bids back, we'll know exactly what it's going to cost, how far the money that we have will go, and then what can we. Um, basically do up on the second floor with what um, the director and seniors want to see up there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's existing space. It's it's not ideal, but there are some big spaces. So I think some of it's going to be what are, the, what are the goals for programming and then what can we either utilize or change within the funding that we have sure. for the time being. But um, some of the things, so where the kitchen is, that will stay where it is. Um, obviously updated across will be the cafe, um, there'll be room for a salon, um, and then there's the general lobby where the elevator is. Um, some of the things in the back won't change, but you'll notice there'll be a dedicated arts and crafts room, pool hall, um, social services office, nurse, and then the community room, and then this, will, th this area will change a little bit too. Um, so like I said, big question is obviously when is this happening? Um, and we're just going through that process right now. I'm still trying to get all the money together, <clears throat> get the bids out, and then um, and then see what the lead time on equipment is. So. And when this first started, we did tell everyone this is a process. Doesn't happen overnight. Nothing happens overnight. Even if you're doing construction in your own home, it takes months and months. So this is going to be probably. What have we been out like six months with this already? So it's going to be yeah. probably a good year before uh -oh. total before even anything starts. Yeah, I mean, if I if if I get from ISD and from the designers like a, this is the construction date, I'll report right to uh, so, so John, on, the on director the, on the schematics. You know, we, we we've talked about just today about space. Uh, right, uh, and uh, you know, big concern of like dining area yes. in space. So here, does this show us that we're going to have more space for that? I mean, how's that happen? The, like the dining area itself? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that that'll largely be the same. But I think what we're, I mean, and I don't want to speak for you or, or anybody else, but I think the idea is hoping to really activate these other spaces. So whereas a lot of the stuff right now takes place in the community room, mm. um, you'll be able to have arts and crafts happening, pool happening, mm -hmm. you know, so, outdoor, when the weather is nice, outdoor space here. So so you won't have as much congestion here. So what's going to make this space more more user friendly is when we get better tables. Right. right. So, so And you're going to have the cafe down the end that you'll be able to host a few people to sit in yeah, also yeah. Okay. across mm -hmm. from the kitchen. Uh, just in my mind, looking at the space here, how could we u utilize the second floor? 
uh, uh, more efficiently. Efficiently, like you mean. Well, think it, of everything that you have in the community rooms that mm -hmm. is not lunch or breakfast. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Right. Absolutely. Right, I was because I was imagining or like just a over. Yeah, right. or over. I mean, it's, or over. Yeah. So yeah. Is that quite about the computer room and the exercise room to have the calf there across from the kitchen? I think so. I think part of what we'll be thinking about for the second floor is can we envision a space up here? So, so there's part of this was we hadn't been up there to look at it. I think we'll, and, and really get a sense of exactly what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And so now we know. And there's a few smaller offices that probably aren't going to be ideal. But what are the bigger spaces that we can use, or how can we make a bigger space to to do the computer room? Well, that's what I yeah. uh, and or the exercise. Instead room. of eliminating rooms here. <coughs> Can we eliminate rooms upstairs to make this larger area so that that would accommodate more people to help our activities? Well, the designs are already done on this. It's oh, okay. not something that we can to, change. just to have these designs the, the, done. The first floor. Yeah, the yeah. first floor. The yeah. second floor we'll work on. Right. John, I can't remember. I was up there once. I think instead of individual offices up there, I think they're petitions. Oh, is it? I think yeah. the petitions are there, so that's something we can work with in-house too. If we don't have the funds right. with inspectional services, maybe take down one petition, make a double room. Double room. Right. Double room. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's something we yeah. are still getting the second floor, and that was everybody's concern. No, it's great. Oh yeah, it's we all are great. Getting it. I think that the two main things, and they could go up in the second floor. Get this pool table and the other pool table back in one room yep. to bring the fellas back that were utilizing yep. that. And also, we need a conference room, something to accommodate 20, 30 people For meetings. at a meeting. And that's something... And again, if well, there's partitions that you can just take down, mm -hmm. that's all well and good because... Go but I think it's something we need to think about. It's what we need. And we don't have. Yeah, and 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 again, like I'm not gonna. Um, we're not gonna tell you how to use space like that, like you know, swing space, like a conference room. Um, th there is a pool hall here identified um, that should ac <laughs> yeah. accommodate um, two tables. Yeah, and then I think you know part of it will be with the activation of this other space. You know, you, you'll obviously find well, there, there is a conference room here. Probably not going to be able to hold the twenty or thirty, but can you you right. know swing something in the cafe? or the community room, or you know, what's going on upstairs. So I, I certainly think it's just about um, the, and again, like this is obviously for the staff here to decide how to, right, right, how to fill the right. space and, and um, think creatively about what's going on here, what can we do right. over here. And, mm. yeah. and that is at every senior center oh, I've yeah, ever yeah, been yeah, at, yeah, John. Yeah. So that is nothing new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly yeah. wouldn't. I've yeah. Mary has not yeah, Mary had it. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, Mary. Yeah. And yes, too, what's coming to my mind is on like yesterday, when the woman came for yoga, mm -hmm. maybe we could use the conference room for them so they could have their time because yesterday we had to be quiet. We couldn't talk live. Mm -hmm. And that's all right, I'm just saying. That could possibly be a possibility because it wasn't 30 of them, but they definitely need a room where they can, you know, meditate. zone in. And yeah, do. that's about trying to do, right. do multiple yes. activities at the same time yeah. to have the exercise going on, mm -hmm. but then, you know, if right. people don't want that, they right. can go into the other rooms Which or... Which I did. Right. I so we, we need to, we need to yes. think about that. That yes. is a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John, I appreciate you coming down. Yeah, to yeah. 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 yeah, I wish yes. I had... We're doing this tomorrow where <laughs> well, everybody's it, getting a sledgehammer. No, we're going to go too far. <laughs> <laughs> no, John, I can't swim. swim. You That's how we will think it. it. John, this swim with the second. Wait a minute. Wait, is there the same almost when they do in the full presentation in the city hall? Um, they don't change anything? For, for this? Yeah. Um, we've not been asked. I mean, like the counselor. It, yeah, not to say we haven't been asked, but... Um, I know that was important to bring it to you all first, mm -hmm. certainly the director too. They, so. they, they, they say they're going to have um, the nurses room, yeah. they're going to have a um, meditation, they're going to have the playroom, mm -hmm. they're going to have um, the meeting room. Mm -hmm. the, all the room, they, they, I have the list, in, I, I don't know if yeah, you remember was, from that day. I remember. Mm -hmm. yes. I have yeah. the list, they, all the stuff. They, yeah, well, I mean, and I think a big part of this is, the, you know, the architects came through and said, what are the wants, what are the programming spaces, and then, I mean, um, you know, obviously 
with limited space, it, there's going to be the need to figure out uh, each room upstairs or even downstairs mm -hmm. might kind of wear different hats. Today right. it might be a cafe, yeah. tomorrow it might be a, right. a, a right. swing street. So, so, so I don't know that there's going to be every single room, and, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I just, um, we have limitations, so I think it's going to be multiple with this staff, yes. who exactly. have been fantastic. Right. Well. Multi yeah. Multiple yeah. 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 rooms. Yeah. I mean, exactly. that's, that's not how I was taken, yeah. Yeah. that's really why I was taken upstairs even. I mean, if that was a bigger room mm -hmm. where that you had an event that you had to have a hundred people that would be comfortably out mm -hmm. there. I hope that they will you know, work and work together for, and we'd be purpose. happy like mm -hmm. the other center, senior center, they have they have everything. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, well, I, I think that we're at a very we're beginning. A we're 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 thank you. We're, we're a year old. We're a year old. That brings me to oh, 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 once again. This is a transition. Yes, once again. Yeah. I want to remind us as the Council on Aging right. Board. <laughs> We are here to support right. this building and the staff, right? Right. And an arm of the Council on Aging Board is the Friends, which their report is coming up. But I do think that we have to also look at the other city um, boards. Mm -hmm. And their Friends has a very active fundraising arm um, that they do things. So I think that we should talk about um, those that are not just on this board, but also on the Friends to see how we can work with um, city departments and Megan to talk about fundraising activities for the things that everybody's talking about we won here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was advocacy by Mass Senior Action that Brendan knew that we needed money for this. It was advocacy by Mass Senior Action that Seth Moulton went to the feds for this. So none of this stuff ever just happens, right? right. It it's takes all of us in the community to bring these things together. Joan has mentioned to everybody and their brother that the friends would like some more support, some more arms, some more workers, some more people to help. So in Lynn, if you know people that love to fundraise, that doesn't like meetings, but they love to fundraise, mm -hmm. Joan is recruiting for the friends. We on the Council of an Aging, if you think of things that we can do to raise funds, um, you know, let's work together so that whenever this is shovel ready and we're ready to go, we can have the things that we need to fill those rooms, whether it's new mats for the yoga studio or new pool sticks, mm -hmm. whatever it may need. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that we have to continue to advocate if we want the senior center that I think that we all want. And we also have to remember the Council on Aging, we cannot fundraise because we're through the city. That's why we have Joan here, the friends of the Council on Aging, who can fundraise for us. So please, anybody, reach out to Joan. Anything to do with fundraising, we can use it. We're getting, we're getting there with our senior center, and like Pam said, we might need new mats. We might need new art supplies. We need a lot, so please reach out and help us. I help them, help the friends. And we're talking through the entire Lynn community through our friends on LCTV, too, that um, it isn't just us in this room, it's the whole community. Yeah, I should say, too, the city is extremely grateful to the friends for uh, everything that they've done. I know that there was significant uh, contributions for the van and um, everything that you've done previously and will continue to do, so thank you Did all we for the Venmo support. I'm gonna. Leave, I'll leave these plans. Um, there are some other general notes that you'll see. Um, you know, like this, for instance, talks a little bit more about just the roof garden, which is obviously mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And um, some of it is just yeah. Mm -hmm. But and not to go on sore toes. Do we know what the third floor will be used for yet? No. Okay. We don't know yet. Okay. There's been discussions, but mm. I don't think they, we've landed on anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, they should put the bathroom there. The what? I'm sorry. No. The bathroom. Oh, the boardroom. Board oh, I was thinking maybe the health department. Then we would have a full-time nurse. That would be nice. Megan's working on that. Yeah. Megan is. I'll give her credit. She is working on that right now. Okay. I know that for a All right. Thank you. Uh, for the, uh, May not be full time, but she is working on to get in the rest of it. Does anybody have any questions? 
question. That's okay. All right. Thank you. So if anybody has questions, at least you have. I, I have them. Yes, have I do. Yeah. Right. All right. So we are at Friends of the COA, Joe Noble. Yes. yes, and if you listen to my report, you will understand that I did have a woman reach out who is out advocating for the friends and getting gift certificates that are going to be a factor in our raising more money on our 50-50 raffle. There were no scheduled meetings of the friends in July or August. On September 1st, 2023, at the celebration of Labor Day at the Senior Center, the Friends held their 50-50 raffle. The first prize was $182 to the winner. Subsequently, six more prizes were given out. Second prize consisted of two tickets to Paul Anker concert in November at Lynn City Hall. Third, fourth, and fifth prize was a $50 gift certificate to Kowloon's in Saugus. The sixth prize was a sub for four from Jersey Mike's in Saugus, and the seventh prize was a full-size blanket. The next scheduled meeting will be held on Thursday, September 28th at 9.15 at the Senior Center. Respectfully submitted John B. Noble liaison to the Council on Aging Board. Thank you, Joan. So, Does anybody you. have any questions for Joan? We appreciate all the friends <coughs> And we do have the upcoming um, events that, uh, unfortunately, because I was ill, I was not able to meet with Megan. But I do have gift certificates of substantial amounts that will be given out at the Halloween party, at the Thanksgiving Day event, and Christmas. So, and, and as you know, the money increase on the last raffle was substantial because of the other gift certificates. So we, we are fortunate to have a woman, her name is Marie DiCello, and she is out there advocating for the friends. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Can I make a motion to accept Joan's minutes to our motion to accept? Motion accepted. Second. Perfect. So we are on to new and old business. Um, construction site and space, we just went over. Yeah. Um, steam table and serving needs. I am happy to report. I will say, I was here um, Monday for the first time in a while, and I had a meal that was hot. Nice. Which was really wonderful because sometimes when the meal says hot, and it is something that I enjoy, it's either cold, which hot meals feel cold and not very pleasant. Yes. So I will say the steam table is working. Yeah. Well, awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Megan, is that making it easier on um, the process? I believe it is. So we're still having to take and receive the food in the morning in the kitchen and do all of that. But after we put it on that small warmer in the kitchen, we're able to bring it out at about like 10, 30, 11, put it on those in the steamer and keep everything piping hot. And it's an easier serving process because the food is hot and we're scooping it right from there. We're not laying it out and scooping individual plates and then wasting all the saran wrap wrapping them. So mm -hmm. I think that in the long run, not only is the food got to be hotter, but it's also got to save us money on paper products. So I think Great. it's a win-win. Great. In the long run, too, when they start the construction, you're going to have the built-in steam table. I think oh. that's in there because it's going to be cafeteria style oh, if you look okay. at the plans. And I think that's what we're looking at because that's what we had at Cliss. The steam tables were built in, so somebody was on the other side serving, right. so they just went down with their tray. Right. That was nice. Yeah. Get on my hands yeah. and knees draining the steam table weekly, well, daily, actually, so. Yeah. Well, me and the staff, we share that. Um, so, honestly. Can I <coughs> ask, and this isn't to point fingers, but um, so after I volunteered down here on Labor Day, it is, I just wonder um, if there might be a way that we could talk to um, the custodial um, union 
to talk about the duties because we are talking about we are short on staff here, but yet we have directors who are washing dishes and mopping the floors. Not saying that I don't know the custodial bargaining unit agreement. I don't know what their duties it's are. It's a contract. It's it's not a contract. contract. It's That's a contract. bargaining unit. Good agreement. <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh, I would have to yeah. look into it because I want to say basically what they do between City Hall, the fire, uh, police station here, they empty the trash, I think mop the floors at night, vacuum, it, uh, clean bathrooms, the restrooms. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're in, I'll uh, double check, but I don't think it's anywhere in the contract that for them to go in somewhere to do dishes. That's not yeah. that mm -hmm. type of So service. would it be better if we just had like, um, <coughs> Uh, that like invest in a dishwasher itself, kind of like a we machine. Yeah. We have to get prices because you need an industrial one. You can't yeah. just put a regular one in here. Yeah. Um, and that's something you would have to go through the health department because they would tell you what you would need. Then you'd have to look at pricing. And I'm going to be honest. I think they that would impact the design too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's no They're more. Well, I'd rather impact the design than have staff that we're paying to help our folks, you know. But uh, it depends to, on what you're using it. I just think that, once again, we have an obstacle, <coughs> and we need to figure out a way. We can't just keep doing it the way we're doing it, because it's not working. It would be helpful if we could have, like, at least a part-time custodian come down during the day, because <coughs> there's, we've unclogged toilets here. Um, we're cleaning blood up off the floor, we're cleaning up coffee that's spilled. If somebody drops a coffee on the table, then it's everywhere, and you're down on your hands and knees, cleaning all of that up. Um, so. I just have a question. So, you know, I think this is interesting. So why, why aren't we trying to implement some of the things that we used to do at the old center? Like, in other words, we had a good, like I would call it kitchen crew. Where they come, and I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure that was mostly volunteer. <coughs> With it, like um, you know, we had uh, some certain, of them were employees. You, from okay. Yeah. Came down. What you is this up paid, to? You had paid staff behind the counter okay. at, at the old center. But, you had volunteers serving, but right. the people behind the counter were paid. Because I thought that that to me seemed to go very well. We had the the volunteers for the service, which were the seniors, and they they used that. For the tax program. Yeah, the well. abatement. Right. Yes, we, right? we do have right. some of those. Yes. And then, like you said, you're talking about the kitchen uh, duties as far as dishes, and that, like, that's what they used to do there, and it made it just more manageable, right, for the for the director as well. Well, in the current job descriptions of the staff that work in this building, none of it has to do with cleaning the toilets or the dishes. Right. Like, none we of need it. to have. Yeah. Well, they used to have a, a custodian uh, over right. there. But that, that was through Glyph. That I know. was through Glyph. Right. I understand. That right. was a different situation. Right. Well, that's well, true. But we like, could put that on the list of things to be explored. What Pam is saying that you know we have looked at other senior centers. The director's not cleaning the bathrooms. I mean, we they must short staff. We are here. Yeah. yeah. So right. So they. It's our budget. We don't have it in the budget, so it's something we have to go back to oh. at. I'm sure. When do you have to start your budget? So I'm soon. I just met with Mike Pacino this week. So, for instance, let's say let's. I'm just throwing any number. Say our budget's a hundred thousand. So Megan is going to have to put in but three hundred thousand. Not that she's going to get that. So right. if she gets an extra fifty thousand. Whatever it might be. Right. Lucky, but she has to double of what we need. Right. Can I, you know, I, can, I know I've said this to other people, you know, farther than Mike. When we were in the pandemic, the monies that are allowed allotted from the state to each senior center, and I can't remember the number offhand, it was over a hundred something thousand, maybe a hundred. That money was still given to City Hall for the senior center. We were closed. Mm -hmm. What happened to that money? Mm -hmm. I think Megan, you Mike Mike Pacino and I are exploring that. We are exploring that because you are. they need okay. to. Yes, that, that for some reason or other just bothers me mm -hmm. because what happened to that money? We were closed. Yes, yeah, and that money yourself. was still being allocated from <laughs> the right. Department of Massachusetts. Yeah. That was just a small amount, according mm -hmm. to, you know, what 
the city of Spain. But to us, over three years, that's quite a bit. That's, that's quite enough. a bit of money. Significant. Sure. All right. That's. Well, I don't know how much of that was used to purchase a building, but my understanding is some of that money was used. But you're saying it's three years, Joan? Well, we were in the pandemic. We weren't open for, well, 2019. We didn't have a senior center. We didn't have a senior center. And then we didn't have one. Yeah, we, we have a 20, so 21. Of February, I think. 22. Three years we did not have Yeah, three years right. we didn't have a senior center. Okay. I think it was February when the pandemic hit and everything was closed down. Right. And yet that money was given to the city. So where, where is it? We need an so, accountable. So again, Mike, Mike Pacino and I are looking at that. And the, the problem is if the computer system that the city has is really antiquated. It's called Munis. And it's like 25. That's why you only got this report. Because the system isn't allowing me to generate what you want yet. But at some point the system is changing and he's telling me that so i am going to continue to work with mike Bertino and i'm going to work with the chief financial officer oh, that's his title i'm going to work with steven spencer, Steve spencer yeah. because we, we have to figure out that's a very legitimate question and we have to figure out the answer to that question again i believe some of that money was used to pay for the building but we're going to find out exactly what happened thank you absolutely hey, did you have something? yes so um Megan, right now, the person that was hired to help in the kitchen or to work in the kitchen, what are their, how many hours do they get? He's a part-time person, so it's 18.5, and he has standard hours. Um, two days a week he comes in at 9, and I think the other three days he comes in at 9.15. So he's coming in after we've, already start, after we've already received the food, A, and after we've already started and made and served breakfast. Mm -hmm. So that's Tanya and me, the staff, doing all that before he even gets here. Wow. And then we moved lunch back from 11.30 to 11.45 because it seemed that as soon as people got there, they ate breakfast, we did one activity, it was time for them to go. But with doing that, it doesn't give the kitchen coordinator adequate time to clean up everything. So we're kind of struggling with that. So he leaves 12.15, 12.30. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very short window of time that he is here in the building with us. So um, I very much want a full-time kitchen coordinator so that they can help with breakfast, do the lunch, keep it hot, and also just have another staff person available in the afternoon for afternoon activities, whether it's pool, bingo, meditation, gardening, jazz, just to have another staff person available to support our seniors. Well, if the kitchen wouldn't support that, though, right? The kitchen would be doing the cleanup and they helping would be, with the steam table and that. So the staff person that is now doing dishes could be out on the floor. Yes. Right? So if we had a kitchen staff person, they could just be dedicated in there. Um, for the I, I don't want to say fully dedicated because, yes, that would be their primary job function. But here, everybody just has to pick up a hand. So... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, primary job function, but would I expect in additional support from the staff to help out with other things? Yes, like everybody has to do. I'm not. I'm not going to send them into the bathroom to clean clean the toilets. I, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I, I would expect that maybe they can go and sit in the exercise room with the senior who's riding on the bike to make sure that you know that person is safe. If they fall, we want somebody to be in there and know, right? Mm -hmm. Or they could be in the computer room with um, the tech support because we do tech support a couple days a week for folks. So just kind of circling people around so it builds a relationship between the staff and the seniors and it gives just another level of support. We, when I first came, people were leaving like right after lunch and now they're staying till about 1.30. We're trying to get people to really utilize the time here till three o'clock and by having staff available in the afternoons, I think that that enhances that ability. People can build relationships. They can spend a little more time. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're aiming for. So that's why I say, yes, it would be a kitchen person. But when you finish the dishes and all, the tallying is done, come out and maybe play bingo with the seniors or play dominoes or sit and talk with someone in color. Just be engaging and be present. OK, thank you. Sure. <clears throat> All right, next on the agenda, parking reconfiguration. 
Now, that's just a follow-up. Just to follow up for the parking lot here, um, I did check on my way here. The signs are not done yet to put up. They are in process. Um, we're hoping they'll be <coughs> up within the next week. The signs that say senior parking only? Senior parking only. And they are also have little stickers for the cars that the seniors that are here all the time, mm -hmm. that they can put it on the cars. And there's going to be until they move out upstairs, but there's going to be just a spot for visitors parking. For instance, I'm not going to get a sticker because I'm not here all the time. Mm -hmm. And even say the hairdresser. She's here two days, three days a week. She can park in the visitor park. Mm -hmm. It's for um, the seniors that come daily or on a daily basis. That is awesome. Because when they start construction over here at mm -hmm. the MBTA, we want to make sure nobody is parking in here but seniors or visitors. So we want to make that more secure, which will help too when they start <coughs> construction. If you noticed on there, um, right out front of the building where it, the main entrance for the elevator is, mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the equipment and staging okay. is going to go. So, and that was one of the things we want to make sure that when construction starts and when that platform opens up in the spring, nobody else can park in here. Mm -hmm. Nobody can say, oh, I'm going to park in here, go to work, come home. Mm -hmm. Their car will be ticketed. And if it happens all the time, it will be towed on their expense. So, we're trying to make it that it's just senior center and visitors only in here. So we don't have to worry about I, that. I appreciate that because I'm also the traffic police in the parking lot when school gets out. Yes, oh, that's, that's a big awful. thing. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So that is, um, hopefully that will help too. I but think it will. We're hoping within the next week the signs will be finished and they will be put up. Great. Um, let's see what we have. Driver hours and how to sign up for a ride. Okay. So we have a full time driver. His name is Jose, and the process is to call the main number here at the Senior Center and speak to someone. If we don't answer the phone, please call back. <coughs> Do not leave a message saying, I want to ride on Tuesday morning. You need to speak to someone and confirm. And then once that individual is in our system, then Jose will call them with his phone and coordinate. Um, they do um, manifest every night for, for the transportation to make sure they know who they're picking up. Right now there's two rides in the morning, two buses coming here in the morning, and two buses in the afternoon from Jose. I heard good things. A few of the seniors were saying it's great because he'll pick up the phone to say I'm on my way or I'm around the corner so yes. they know to go out. So mm -hmm. that has been working out very well from what I hear from the seniors. And it's very nice and he's a bilingual gentleman. He used to be a driver for Gliss for 14 years, so he had, he's a seasoned, experienced, kind, kind man. Madam Chair, if you excuse me, I'm just on the text for work. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, John. We appreciate you coming today. I know we're running really late today. Thank you. 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 And there are two board positions open that need to be filled. I know there have been some applications. Um, if anyone is interested, that is through the mail, mayor's office. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to make a little resume, I think, fill it out. But um, we do have two board positions open All if right. anybody is interested. So they contact the mayor's office? Yes, that the process? Because I, I know that there's two people who are interested. Yeah. Okay. If I'm correct, I think it's Danye that is in charge of it up in the mayor's office okay. for all the different boards through the city. Okay. So you would call and ask him what the procedure is. But I think it's just a small little resume, nothing like you're going for a job interview. Okay. Yeah. That sounds and, good. And hopefully we'll get those filled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does anybody have any questions or concerns with, from this meeting? Okay. You're going to go to? Okay, Betty, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to, to look for a cup, but you can drink coffee. Okay. Oh, I okay. have the coffee here. Oh, you have that? All right, everybody. Uh, it was late, but it's here. I, don't, right. I still right. know. So, yes. No? Yep, 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 and just you have to bring it to the mayor's office. Right, fax it over. Okay, fax it over, whatever. Yep. I would bring it. Yeah, I would bring it in. This there. was faxed August 31st. 
Really? Okay. So I should bring it to the mayor's office? You can just call to make sure they make got sure. it. Yeah. Um, motion. motion to adjourn. Thank you. 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 Thank you.